Greetings from Costa Rica. If you're interested in buying land here, today I'm going to give some general thoughts. First of all, on how you should find land here. Second of all, what questions you should be asking if you're thinking about buying land. And finally, I'm going to touch on ocean view land and ocean front land to explain uh, some answers to the most common questions I get about those kinds of parcels. Stay tuned. Greetings from Costa Rica. I hope you're doing well. My name is Matt Rosensteel and today I'm going to be talking about buying land here in Costa Rica. If you're interested in getting straightforward information about moving here, do be sure to subscribe to my channel. You will make me extremely happy. I could just see that little number change, including your subscribe. Today I'm going to be covering first how to find the best land for you here in Costa Rica. Second of all, I'm going to go over some questions that you should be asking and especially some critical items that you need to know about any piece of land that you're considering buying. And finally, I'm going to touch on ocean view and ocean front land simply because I get a ton of people who want to make that happen and live on the beach here. And there's some information you need if you're searching for that. Without further ado, let's talk about how to find land here in Costa Rica. There's really one critical point that I want to make here, and that finding land is an on-the-ground search. It may sound crazy, but I get tons of inquiries from people who want to start their search for land here online. There are a number of reasons why that is flawed. Aside from the fact that you can't physically see the land, etc., the online land listings are in fact a fraction of what's available here. If you watch Michael Allen, that's something he brings up a lot. There are tons of land parcels that are for sale that honestly on brokerages websites around town will not be listed simply because there's an abundance of land for sale here. You need to understand that virtually every piece of land for Costa, in Costa Rica is up for grabs if you've got the right amount of money for it. Um, the second critical point about how to find your land here is that first, you should find your ideal location. And I don't mean that exact spot, the piece of land that you want to buy. Come down here and figure out what part of the country is best for you. In fact, it's almost entirely an exercise in futility to begin researching land in Costa Rica if you haven't figured out which part of the country you want to move to. Spend a month traveling around, spend six months spending different times in different places, but really your first step is to figure out where you're going to be happy in Costa Rica. The region, the community, even the gated neighborhood that you finally zeroed in on once you've done those research trips and you actually know this is where I want to live, then start looking up land listings. I can't emphasize this enough. So many people start out from the absolute opposite end of the spectrum. They say, I want to move to Costa Rica. Where can I find land for sale? And pretty soon they're Googling every available piece of land that they can find on the different platforms, emailing agents, asking pros and cons, on and on and on. And they still haven't even realized that whether Costa Rica is absolutely right for them, let alone which part of the country it's going to be best. So start once you've figured out your location. Finally, a third tip for your strategy on finding land. A lot of people, and I'm going to get a smile from behind the camera on this one, a lot of people decide to exclude a realtor or think that when I'm buying land, it's a much more direct, straightforward process. They may also think that a realtor is not going to show me land because they want to sell only those homes or those condos that are going to bring a better, bigger commission, etc. Honestly, for a lot of realtors or people in Costa Rica, I'm not going to say that's not the truth. But I highly recommend if you found your land parcel and if you think you've got the right spot, do include a realtor in your purchase. 
even if you've already done all of the field work yourself to find that spot, simply because there could be a huge number of questions that you don't understand about the parcel. It looks nice on paper. It looks nice physically. Everything seems to be perfect. The price is ideal, on and on. But bringing in a realtor for that 3% commission that they're gonna charge might end up sending, saving you enormous headaches uh, if any one of those liabilities or the downsides of that property turn out to be true. Next, let's move on to what questions you should ask or what things you need to know about property you want to buy. Really, it's a fairly straightforward uh, list of requirements. And these are all things that your attorney, guided by a good realtor, or rather in conjunction with a good realtor, will fulfill in their due diligence process on your undeveloped parcel. First of all, you're gonna have to determine the availability of water and electricity. That should be expressed in formal letters given by both the utility providers during your due diligence process. If there's already a water meter there where you can see an active connection, you might not necessarily need the local ASADA, which is the wider water provider, to prove that there's access there. Or there are situations, for example, electricity is already installed, you can see the transformer. Really, you don't have to be overly concerned that those services are available. But if you're buying something in a very rural area, you need to make sure that the utility we're getting some strong winds here, that the utility providers are going to give you that access before you purchase the property, and really, before your deposit has become non-refundable, which is your due diligence process. Uh, second of all, another question that you should ask if you picked your land parcel is whether the boundaries as they exist in physical space-time are the same as the boundaries on your registered land survey, which here in Costa Rica is called a plano. If you're purchasing a piece of land, you can pay a surveyor to come out and verify 100% where your legally registered boundaries or the absolute um, corners of the property are according to your plano. It can be costly to do this, even for a small parcel, the topographer I work with, the surveyor, charges usually about $500. But remember, you're choosing your home site, you're choosing to invest your life savings, you're choosing to really come to a foreign country and make a new home. Spend the 500 bucks, get your parcel checked, a surveyor will be able to tell you, well, your neighbor's fence is actually encroaching six inches or you know, your fence line is spilling onto their property and it might be another $500 expense that saves you thousands in issues down the road. Say, for example, if you accidentally build on your neighbor's property or too close to it because you don't really know exactly where that boundary is. So get a surveyor's report. Many people will also ask about a property, oh, will it be titled? Will I have the same rights of enjoyment and usage as I would in the US or Canada? 99.9% .9 of the land in Costa Rica, or some figure like that, is titled. You will have fee simple, uh, direct ownership of it, just like you would in the United States. Our national registry is transparent and open to everybody, so you can actually see the title of a property online by logging into the Registro's website. You can see what liens are registered against it or any outstanding liabilities. And so, yes, your, your property should be titled, assuming it's not right on the ocean. So finally, let's talk about ocean view and ocean front real estate. And this is simply because I get a ton of inquiries from people who really, really want that view or to be on the ocean. Let's start with ocean views. There is not a huge number of places in Costa Rica an endless quantity of high quality gated communities where developers have been able to take advantage of ocean views. To be honest, there are a limited inventory of gated communities in any part of Costa Rica where you've got brilliant ocean views. A lot of the land that you will look for online that is ocean view real estate 
will be outside of one of those gated communities. And it's simply because of the finite nature of the number of developments that got started, had a successful business plan, and achieved full development. Now, why do I say this? It's important to understand getting into a gated community in a great location with an ocean view, that becomes very expensive. You can find ocean view parcels in non-gated communities that will have reasonable prices, and those are going to be the ones that catch your eyes online and that people always inquire about. Oftentimes, those are going to be up a dirt road uh, with a varying level of access during the rainy season and as the road comes in and out of maintenance with the municipality in that area. So, if you're looking for ocean view real estate, uh, start with the understanding that your absolute ideal parcel, located in a gated community with amenities, etc., close to your private school, close to a tourism hub where you can find all kinds of restaurants, that is a very, very finite resource, and it's going to carry a high price tag. Speaking of finite resources, let's talk about oceanfront real estate. As I've talked about on this vlog before, Costa Rica passed a coastal protection law in the late 70s that essentially limited or eliminated all new development on the coast for tidal property. As of that law, they were going to give no new titles within 200 meters of the beach. Everything that was not titled as of that year or potentially grandfathered in through other programs became concession property. Concessions are far more complicated than titled property. It's a lease with the local government and concessions carry a higher tax bracket and numerous difficulties in order to obtain a building permit. And in fact, the concession itself requires approval of other ministries here in Costa Rica besides your local municipality. So whereas, for example, buying a fee simple titled piece of property is a very simple process where your lawyer really ends up only executing a three page document transferring this title from one person to the other, a concession process in order to get established first is a proposal, a, a process with a municipality to identify where you can get your concession, and then several more processes to get the approval of other ministries involved. Your building permit is simply is similarly complicated, etc. I say all this to, to explain that oceanfront real estate is even more finite, and while we have Tons of people who dream of Costa Rica. They imagine their perfect two-bedroom bungalow on the beach, a little bit of land where they've got some privacy, etc. That's an almost impossible dream outside of a few locations and very specific places and very specific budgets. Um, because there was that limit placed on ocean front real estate, uh, you'll see that any titled piece of oceanfront land is going to cost you absolutely dearly. You see prices that start from $100 per meter squared for a larger parcel that go all the way up to seven, eight hundred, a thousand dollars per meter squared if you're in a tourism hub. So if you have that dream, you want to live on the beach in your private paradise with a nice spacious property, you're going to need millions of dollars to make that happen. And it's not because Costa Rica is some ultra exclusive place for billionaires. It's literally just that development right on the beach has been so severely limited by those coastal protection laws. That's about all I have to say today about buying land in Costa Rica. Do be sure to subscribe to my channel. I'll put a little logo up here as we sign off. Have a great day and thanks for watching.